be honest, nice to see you a long time no see. <laughs> um, Liam Gibbs, what can you tell us? Uh, yeah, we need a we need a scan today, and it will be here in the afternoon. But it is it is an injury just like like uh, what he had here uh, last time. So unfortunately, I think we're looking at at you know same amount of weeks. So up to ten, but hopefully hopefully before that. But uh, yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, uh, terrible for the lad. Terrible f for you as well, I'm sure. Um, and, and just to clarify, it is the same issue that he, he had before, same hamstring, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. We need a, a scan to be 100% clear and, and to see uh, how severe it is. But but just looking at, at, at his reaction and, and seeing him today, then uh, no, it, it doesn't look good. Unfortunately, that's, uh, yeah, like I also said Tuesday night, it's mostly for, for him. But and, and you could I mean, you could see, I think he's subsequently gone on social media and said how heartbreaking it is to have worked so hard to get back. And yeah, then... Yeah. You know, he, he looked very emotional on the pitch as well. You know, it's gonna it's gonna be to get through the, the the mental side of it is the first part, isn't it? Before the physical. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it is, and we of course we, we look into how we can support him because it's never it's never easy with these injuries where you're out for for more than just a couple of weeks, and especially to have one just straight after uh, coming back again. So that's that's a that's a tough one but if, if if someone can handle then it's him because he's a he's a great person um and i was looking forward to have him in the team again and we were just about to get started with him which is i think it's important for him and the club and i think he he's a he's valuable f for us and and for the club so the only thing i can guarantee and say to him is that he will still be valuable for us and and now it's just for us to wait a little bit more but uh, we uh, we get back to work the, the second he's ready again I mean, it may, may be dependent on, on the scan outcomes, but would, could it be the fact that it's a second time now? Would it have to be surgical route, do you think, this time around? Yeah, I think they have to wait and see. And, and there's there's um, there's better experts than me to, to sort that out. But, but of course, uh, yeah, they, they will look into it and, and see what they can do. Uh, in terms of the other guys, midweek, um, no issues there fitness-wise going into Saturday selection? Uh, <coughs> no, no, I don't think so, no. Yeah, so Barnsley uh, got himself back on the pitch and no no reaction from that. No, it was good, and also the plan with him that we that we put him on in in games and 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 he will build up some match fitness also in games. <clears throat> it's important for us that we have that we have a player that we can that we can put on up front uh, to hold the balls, control them for us, uh, to be a good link player. Uh, so the plan for him is that we we nice and easy build it up so it can be more and more and more. Uh, I don't want to, because we, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about anti the game, and then he obviously, you know, stepped up and, and got that all important goal. But just from that dimension, to have Barnes back in there, a player who knows what it's all about in terms yeah. of the striker role, knows what it's about in the championship, the striker role. I'd imagine that'll be something that you know maybe Anti can look to now, and almost a bit of a mentoring role from Ashley. Is that something you like to sort of encourage as, as head coach? Yeah, definitely. And, and, and actually, with with Barnes, he don't have to do much because he's doing it himself, and he's he's. Uh, He's great out there on the pitch with the with, with the other ones and supporting and 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 really a, a, a good teammate. Um, so so it it's just natural and and it will happen. But it'll be good for Ansi because it it also it also means that we don't have to play him ninety minutes every time. And I think it's been a lot for him. And there's been a lot of minutes. And it was not it was not something we we planned that he should be just playing more or less all the minutes for us here to to begin with. It is sometimes important for a young player to have a to have. You know, just to play 60 minutes and, and don't go all out every time and, and be a little bit more fresh, uh, both in your in your legs but also in your head uh, the days after. Um, so it's been a lot of match minutes for him and then restricted training load uh, where what he needs also is, is is to be more available in training for us. And, and that also gives us now the opportunity when, when Bansi is back. So there's so many upsides about having more players available. Yeah, um, Still the plan, Nunes available for this weekend? Yeah. So he's had a good week now, a good week of team training, no issues. Still, <laughs> yeah, still got that like, smile on his face. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, he was electric when he <laughs> when he was out there the first day, and he's he's running around. We just have to be very very careful with him because I think if we, if we ask him now, he will be able to play ninety minutes on Saturday. So, uh, but he will be in, and it's just it's just good to have him back in the group. But on that point, without wanting to sort of push you, I mean, would it be? Too ambitious to start him at a game at this stage, or, or could he physically, you think, handle that now? A start. I think it would be too ambitious because, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't think we should do anything that is too risky. We need to, we need to, nice and easy, build him in again, and 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 for him to find his way into the team again. 
uh, because again, of course, it's an important one on Saturday, but it's also an important one the the the, the one after that and the one after that and the one after that and. And we need to make sure that we have as many players available for the for the Christmas period as possible. Um, Cordoba still the plan. Uh, QPR, how are we doing with him? Yeah, QPR is the plan. Uh, I think there's a there's a small chance that that maybe Saturday, but 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 then not as a starter, but but maybe just to be uh, a part of the squad. We we're gonna see how he how he looks tomorrow uh, because it's actually a little bit better than expected, and I think it's a it's a definitely gonna be. You're going to be ready for for the Saturday QPR. Okay, that's good news. Yeah, in yeah. terms of you know fullbacks wise now, maybe conversely, you know Kellen's back available. Um, Jack probably carried on in the same vein midweek as he did at West Brom. You know, a very important role in some of those goals. Yeah. And but I wanted to get your thoughts on that. How do you think Ben Grizzani took his chance? Uh, it was good. I think it was good to see. Um, I think I don't think he was tested the same way as 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 Jack was, especially in the first one against West Brom. Um, but then you still have to do your job, and I think definitely he did. I think he looked solid. I think he looked uh, he looked comfortable uh, playing with the teammates again. So again, another good response from a player that haven't played a lot um, throughout the yeah, the previous months. So um, so yeah, exactly what we need actually. Exactly. Yeah, the fact that you've got those options and and within it always feels having now seen enough of your games that those fullback areas, you know, you. We've seen Fisher with the inverted sort of demands you placed on him, but obviously Stacey more of a overlapping attacking fullback. You know that fullback area is quite key, isn't it? To how you want to progress the ball. It is, and it is. Uh, first and foremost, they need to be very comfortable on the ball, all of them. Uh, and I think actually Jack have, have taken some steps in in his, especially game reading. I think, uh, I think he's good now, at, and and. In seeing when to step in and when to stay out wide and when to uh, join their their attacking phase and when to stay a little bit low on his positioning, I think definitely he've taken some steps and I think he he also showed that Tuesday night and especially is it the fourth goal where he makes a good move from the outside stepping into the to the space that becomes open, uh, which is something we didn't see from him in, in the beginning of the season. So so really really good. But but first and foremost, they have to be comfortable on the ball. They have to be. Um, they have to be calm. They have to be technically on a on a good level because they have to be able to deal with situations where they are under pressure, and we have to find the the right solution. So uh, then, of course, opportunities in terms of the of the attacking shape for us, where there is some some differences between them. But it's it's just good for the group, and I think also as an individual player that there is competition. I don't think you will ever become the best player that you can be if you just expect that you will play uh, every Saturday. I think you need to be able to do your best and, and to compete. Uh, it probably flew a little bit under the radar, actually, but uh, Brad Hills came on there towards the end. That was his league debut for the club. Yeah. Um, and he's a player who's obviously had these, these issues with his lower back. Um, yeah. Just delighted for him to, to get him back in the group and actually get him some minutes on the pitch. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's a big night for him. Um, of course, a, a, a local boy, so it means a lot for him to, to be around. Um, and, and yeah, I think... Also for him, we we build it up nice, nice and easy, and, and and good things will take time. But but for him, just to have a a feel for what it is and what it is to play in the championship and 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 to get in there and be a part of the team, I think it it, it means a lot to him. I appreciate it's, you know clearly not on, on your top of your priority list at the moment, but but with him in terms of game minutes and and his, his development. Do you, do you think you'll have a situation you have to weigh up in January? Is it is it better keeping him in around the group? Pretty similar to maybe what you had in the summer. Yeah, or do yeah. you let him go out and as yeah. he did successfully? Well, yeah, and it is a tricky it is a tricky question for us and something where we actually quite often discuss what is the right decision and, and solution. And I think it's it's very individual and also I think it comes down to the player. If it's too difficult not to be around the team as much as you want and not to play every Saturday as as every player wants to do, or can some players can actually see? Okay, it, it it benefits if I just stay here and then learn how we do things, and then hopefully in the future can be around the team. But it's very individual. Uh, so definitely, we will sit down with him. I think middle of December, maybe end of December, and then and find the best solution. Up, I, I, I will not hide that I actually prefers that he stays uh, because the way that we play is still a, a different to many other clubs. Uh, and the level of training out here, and he will be, he will be dealing with some of the best strikers in the league. You know, when Ante is, is, is becoming a good player for us, uh, when Josh is back, when Boja is, is in there, when you know, all these guys up front, uh, he's training with them every day, 
and against them every day, which is just also a part of a development as a player. So it's not only Saturday. That's at least not how I see it. I know it's important, but it's not everything. And end of the day, it's a decision and, and, and conversation we need to have at some point. Just just as a footnote as well, Kate Gordon, would he kind of, in terms of you'll need to make a decision on him, it, I think it's safe to say for all parties, he probably would have come in and Liverpool maybe sent him over here hoping he'd play a little bit more football. Yeah. Clearly hasn't happened yet. I mean, is that something you might need to revisit later in the year? Yeah, well, I would say as long as he have a, as he keeps having a, a, a good impact on the group in terms of training level and, and also his his personality. If he starts to be too frustrated about the whole situation, that of course is something we need to look at. But he's he's eager to learn, and he had, I know he had a meeting with Glenn the other night just to go through a lot of his situations and also his his uh, his physical stats and a lot of those those things in the game that is. That is that we need from him to to be even better uh, for him to have more minutes and and he's eager to learn and and he approaches the coaches when when he wants feedback and 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 he wants that so as long as that's the mindset for him then then there's space for him in the group then we can definitely keep on working with him and as I've, as I said with Callum also we even though it's a lone player we treat him like he's one of ours so it's not like we we prioritize some of the others more than him no if he's if he's engaging with things that we do and his his mindset is open towards towards learning, then we definitely will spend all the time possible. So uh, it is an area of the game where I think we have struggled a little bit to find the right uh, player for that position. Um, I think now that the, the last two games with Jack on the on more offensive position on the outside has given us more chance creation from the right side, uh, where I think to begin with in the season it was mostly from the left, left side where we need to open up for for the right side as well. So I don't think we're there yet. And I think still we have to work on some movements and players and, and how they they work together uh, to find the, the best, um, the best uh, what do you call it, a combination for us up front. But uh, at the moment, still some work for us to, to be done. Okay. Just um, just a footnote on Plymouth. I mean, I'm kind of interested. It's not meant to be flippant, but, but can you actually sit, stand there in front of your technical area and enjoy watching no. your team? No. no. Because you're just so in the moment, thinking and, about all these. And never, because there's so many things, and I'm, you know, I, I still hate myself for that. Was it a, was it the whole game? I think where we are four 0 up, and it's minute ninety something, and and Kenny gets a, a booking uh, for, for 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 making a foul where it, it, it's 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 nowhere needed in that moment, and I think. Because the players are in there and the adrenaline is, is going, so they don't want. They cannot always think about those those moments and situations. But as coach, you, you have to be hands on with every situation. Uh, and and now, of course, he's been out for us some games, and he's on four bookings and and can be out again with another one. And it's these small details in games where you just have to be on top. There's no, we cannot switch off for just seconds. And also in this league, I was. I was not only positive with in, in the meeting today with the boys, even though the result was good, but I think the performance was not top in all areas of the game. And I think we did some we had some sloppy moments out there where it also comes comes back to, to me as a coach where we, we need to support them. We need to be be uh, sometimes even screaming and, and shouting to make sure that we, we have as as few moments of um, as them as possible because it it can change everything and just imagine that that Kenny has received a, a booking at the end of the game or Callum the same then then the Saturday game will be different for us so there's no time to enjoy unfortunately I'll just leave that for the fans to enjoy but um, to, having said that I mean you said it wasn't the perfect performance but two of the areas you've highlighted recently after West Brom about that vulnerability when you score and and the volume of goals you've been conceding in these last six or seven games, that clearly wasn't the case midweek. So that's another positive step in the overall picture. It is. I think what we took away from the West Brom match was that the, the chance creation was really, really on a on a great level. Uh, we created so many dangerous moments and and beside the two goals we scored, could have scored more. Um, of course, I know it was an open game and they also had their chances, to be fair. Um, but it was just it's just positive. I think it, the worst place to be at as a team is that... You have you, you cannot really see where the goals will come from, but here in this team you can see. You know, I had the feeling the other night that every time we were about to attack, we could score a goal, and that's a, that's a great feeling to have, and and that gives confidence to the group and to the players as well. So uh, that that I'm pleased about. But there's still moments and in the game, and it's not to be disrespectful towards Plymouth at all. Uh, but I'll just say if we play against some of the top teams in the league, they will punish us in 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 the moments where we are too sloppy on the ball or. 
we play a little bit too short and too tight instead of switching the play often enough and also the goal we give away just before half time it, we, sh we should never allow uh, something like that to happen so there's always moments and that's why i say we the way that we work is uh, is we keep the emotions on a on a level like this where even though we win there's always th things to look at and we cannot close our eyes for that just because of the result so zooming out a touch in sort of your thoughts generally because the championship now 16 17 games is starting to settle down now clearly i'm sure you did your homework not just on this club but the league that you potentially were going to come into but with that body of work behind you now is there anything that surprise is probably not the right word but maybe that you wasn't expecting that you maybe had to prioritize a little bit in, in how you've approached the job yeah i think what surprised me the most was how open the games can be and how quickly the games can open up uh you know i think the biggest difference is that when you have a lead against uh, yeah, the whole game, for example, where we up with two, then what I come from in the Danish league, you will see an opposition where they sit back and their defense spaces and they're tight and they're really, really compact and the game will be slow. But here it's completely opposite. The game actually opens even more up when you start to score goals and it opens more up. And that that gives us some, some moments also in the game where it can be difficult to control because the 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 players can be spread all over the pitch and that's the that's the tricky moment in, in, in a game because then there's a lot of space starts to open up on, on the pitch and that's something we struggle with a little bit uh, to still keep the control in, in games when they start to be open um, and that's that's also where most games are decided um, in those moments and it's, it's something that that actually surprised me a little bit otherwise I think uh, also yeah ex expected before we start a lot of what we see at the moment that that when we could start to train well enough and we could implement the way that we want to play and we could have the you know the players getting an understanding of how we want to do things then then it will just be a matter of time before we can start to play on a high level but also knowing that it's a young group and it's still a, a new way of playing so there will be there will be games where we where we don't perform on a higher level but that's that's expected so next step for us is is consistency I mean, it's interesting you mentioned hold air i think them and obviously tim walter are part of company this week i think that's off the top of my head, that's about five or six coaches who started the season in this league are, are no longer in post. Does that maybe just reinforce that you're in an environment here where that alignment is in place from the top to the bottom and it gives you a chance to build something? Yeah, I would say end of, end of the day as a coach, and it, it's no matter where you are, uh, you have no idea of that. You have no control, so it's, it, it's never uh, thoughts that I have. I just focus on, on what can I do. I don't feel... Uh, I'm not particularly happy when I see uh, news like that because I think it's early in a season after, I don't know how many games we have played, 7, 17, something like that. I think it's early. And uh, I hope for clubs to be more patient in moments like that and to build uh, an even more clear strategy and, and, and believe and trust in each other because I, I think that's the only way going forward. But end of the day, I cannot really think too much about it because it's not in my hands. It's not something I can, tr I can control. But uh, I try to surround myself with, with people that I really want to... Uh, uh, work with I really want to spend a lot of hours with and I think there's a lot of people in this club where that's the feeling that that they, that they give me and that's the feeling they give all the others that are here and I think it's a it's a well-driven club and there's a lot of thought process behind more or less every decision and I think that that gives you as a coach some uh, some trust and, and and also confidence to to work even harder a few obviously uh, on loot and he's look at the results from afar and, and they're a little bit up and down is that not unexpected, a team who comes out of the Premier League, Norwich obviously experienced it last season and, and that struggle to adapt, maybe the psychology from the players of we were playing Man United this last season, yeah. now it's no disrespect, but it is a different environment. You know, now it's, it's Norwich you were about to say? Not at all, no, no, no. <laughs> Coventry, I'll say Coventry. <laughs> but um, but do, can you see that in their results maybe from afar? Obviously you don't know under the bonnet what's going on there, but yeah. maybe when you come out of the Premier League it is tough. Yeah, and if you just, if you just, are five percent off, then you get punished in this league. Uh, and I would say, yeah, yeah, we we looked we looked okay Tuesday night and we scored some 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 good goals. But you can just go back and watch Plymouth playing Friday night against Watford. It's a completely even game. Uh, so you have to be hundred percent when the game starts. You have to be switched on for all the minutes in the game because otherwise you get punished. And if you just come, you know, start the games with that attitude, okay. I can relax a little bit, we can take it easy, then, then no chance. And that's also what you see in the results out there, that even a, a top team can drop points to the, a team in the bottom and, and, 
and the positions in the in the table in the league can change like this. And it's a yeah, it's a it's it's tough business, and and you really really have to be switched on and and focused in all the all the matches. Then at the end of the day, it doesn't matter you know the name of the team or the name of the players. You have to be present. What type of game do you expect Saturday? You know, where, where are their strengths? Where will your team have to be good? Yeah, I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit unsure. We, we discussed it also today because uh, I didn't watch Champions League yesterday. I watched the Championship games instead. Uh, uh, and there they were quite defensive in their approach and and looked like they were really trying to control spaces and not try to open up too much. Uh, and that's, of course, a part of their approach. I have also seen them being a little bit more uh, front-footed in their, in their uh, especially the pressing game. Um, Quite direct still when they on the ball, so that's that's something we can expect, and we have to be we have to be really really aligned. And when we step up and put pressure, that others cover space in behind us if we should not succeed in that duel. But I think we can expect when they press us that sometimes they step up and go a little bit man for man, and then sometimes they they sit in a lower block, and 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 we have to be calm on the ball, and we have to do a lot of movements up front to be able to open them. Uh, just final one for me, obviously. Four points out of six so far this week. You end on a positive winning note this coming Saturday. Would that that really feel like you've got the, maybe that momentum? And we know the reasons why that you had that sort of drifted away a little bit before the international break. Mm -hmm. Would it feel at that type of haul this week? You've got that back for what is obviously a crucial part of the season. Yeah, it would be a good it would be a good step into the to uh, to the Christmas uh, period of the season with a with a win on Saturday. I think. Then, then it's fair to say that we are we are back again, and, and everyone can see that. But I'm just I'm just pleased with the with the with the players being available for us again. I'm pleased with with the top moments we have in the games because it it gives me also some kind of of trust in the group. I can see okay if we get if we get things right in there with the with the players and the positioning, then we can really really hurt uh, the teams that we play against and and really create a lot of chances. Uh, I just highlighted for the players that we create close to two. Expect the goals within the first 15 minutes Tuesday night, which is that's also some kind of a statement. Uh, that's every team when they when they come to Carroll Road, they know okay the first 15 minutes out there, that's going to be really 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 difficult because we come out so strong and so intense. So uh, of course Saturday, if we win that one, then I think it's fair to say that we are back. Thanks, Janice. Cool. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Paddy.